kids, welcome back to another installment of Up in the Air. My name's Andrea and this is... And I'm Bagel. So great to have you guys. So, we're gonna keep learning about Elisha and Elijah and it's gonna be great. Absolutely. How are you doing? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm doing so good. I have breath in my lungs. I'm ready to do this. I hope you guys are excited too. Yes. We yeah. hope so. We're going to have a lot of fun <laughs> later, so make sure to stay tuned because we're going to do a fun craft. Now, Andrea, I think I'm missing something. We need to do something. What is it? Fable needs to pray. Oh, that's right. So let's pray. Let's All close right. our eyes, bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for another weekend. Please just open up our hearts to the lesson we have for today. You know, all of our needs, I just pray that you meet all of our needs and you help us grow to love you and know you. We thank you, Lord, for being so, so good to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. See you soon. Hey, everyone. Today's Bible memory verse comes from Colossians chapter 3, verse 2. Are you ready? Okay, here we go. Set your mind on things above, not on earthly things. Okay, very good. This time, I'm going to say it, and you repeat after me. Colossians 3, 2. Set your mind on things above, not on earthly things. Very good! Great job! This time, let's do it together. Are you ready? Colossians chapter 3, verse 2. Set your mind on things above, not on earthly things. Colossians chapter 3 verse 2. Great job everybody! Hey there you little floating chicken nuggets! Me Carl, welcome to Grow TV! Welcome to Grow TV! Hosted by Carl! Where we have fun with our friends Talk about Jesus and go over everything the Bible has to offer. Now, once again, welcome to Grow TV. Well, hey there, how y'all doing? <laughs> Me? Oh, I'm just up here in a hot air balloon still. Just floating around, not doing a whole lot. Been almost a week and this balloon still has not come down. And believe me, I've tried everything. I've tried asking. Please, Mr. Hot Air Balloon, please bring me back down to Earth. I'm so hungry and I'm so sorry I popped so many of your family members as a kid. It's just that balloons are so fun to pop because they make that little fun popping noise. But I promise I'll never do it again if you just bring me down to the ground, please. I've tried calling the police. Ah, uh, yes, officer. Uh, I need help. My address? Uh, up the sky. Uh, uh up, in, up in the air? Oh, street? Um, uh, Cloud Street? Hello, officer? I've tried it all. I'm getting so hungry I can barely take it any longer. I guess the only way to go down is to pop the balloon. Here goes nothing. Carl, don't do that. Ah, Katie, what did you do that for? I'm sorry. I just didn't want you to hurt yourself. No, oh, good. I'm glad that didn't happen. I said I'm sorry. Plus, popping that hot air balloon could have been really bad. You could have been in a terrible situation. Well, newsflash, Katie, I'm already in a terrible situation. I'm not only stuck on this floating death trap, I'm so hungry. Sorry. So hungry I could eat the sandwich I left behind my bed when I was in kindergarten. Oh, wow. You're not kidding. I'm not. I haven't eaten in, like, 15 minutes. I just finished my last bag of Cheetos and I got nothing left. What am I going to do? Well, let me ask you this. Have you asked? Oh, I already tried talking to the balloon, but it never responds. But I have never asked about food. Great idea, Katie. Excuse me, Mr. Hot Air Balloon? You don't by a chance have any, like, snacks or, like, I don't know, something to munch on? Not the balloon, Carl. I meant, have you asked God for what you need? Oh, <laughs> yeah, I, I knew that. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. But seriously, this week, after reading our Bible story, I've been really trying to focus on asking God for what I need. You should too. 
Yeah, maybe you're right. You weren't talking about the story where Elisha had to deal with a famine, right? Yeah, that's the one. Oh, cool, because I, I had read that and I was wondering, what is famine? Oh, well, that's easy. A famine is when food is hard to find. It usually happens when it doesn't rain for a long time, so the crops can't grow, therefore making it harder and harder to make food. Oh, that makes sense. Because the story started off with Elisha and a bunch of other prophets that sat down to eat a meal, right? Exactly. One of the men had gone out to find some food, and when he came back and made a stew with it, things kind of went a little south. The stew was bad, right? Yep. For some reason, the stew was inedible. It was going to make everyone sick. But Elisha knew exactly what to do. He grabbed some flour. Yep, I remember. He grabbed a bunch of flowers and put it in there. What kind of you think? Maybe roses, lilies, daffodils? Um, neither. <laughs> it was flour. Like, cooking flour? Wait, how would that fix it? Usually it wouldn't, but Elisha trusted God would use that flour to fix the stew so that the men could eat and survive during this hard time. Oh, that makes a lot more sense. Sure does. And something similar happened later on in the story as well. <laughs> yeah, I love this part. So kids, there's about a hundred men with Elijah and they are all super hungry. And the famine sounds really awful. I don't think I'm famished. I don't think I don't want anybody else to be famished. So what happened next? A man from another city showed up and brought Elisha loaves of bread for them to eat. The only thing is he brought only 20 loaves of bread for a hundred men. Now, I don't know about you, but in my house, we'd be throwing elbows and fighting over that food. I can imagine. And the people were worried because, obviously, that wasn't the amount they expected. But Elisha told them that the Lord said this. They will eat and have some left over. Now, I'm sure some of them doubted because how does 20 loaves feed 100 men? But guess what? It did! Yup. The men ate until they were full, and there was still some left over. It was truly a miracle. How incredible is that? Imagine if things like that happen today. Carl, they do. What are you talking about? I'm talking about the countless things that happen every day that prove to us just how God is taking care of us. Really? Really, I mean, look around. God gives us sunlight to keep us warm, gives us air to breathe and lungs to take in that air. God even gives us loving people to guide us and help us through tough times. God is always giving us what we need, and even the things we want. But sometimes we just need to ask. You think God listens to us when we ask? Of course. And I truly believe there are some things in this world that would not happen if we didn't ask God for it. So you're telling me if I asked for something right now, God would give it to me? Well, that's not exactly how it works. God isn't like a genie where whatever we want, we get. God created us and cares about us so much. God will always help us when we need help. I think I understand now. Just like a parent takes care of their kids' needs, so will God take care of our needs. You got it. But even more so, God has a plan for us. So when we are faced with trouble or struggles, we shouldn't hesitate to ask God for help. Hi kids, it's your good friend Sam. And man, do we have a great big idea for you today. And it's this, I can ask God for what I need. Are you ready to say it with me? This time, we're gonna shout it out to the clouds, okay? One, two, three. I can ask God for what I need. Wow, great job. Don't forget that. No matter what it is, we can ask God for what we need. Now, in the next episode of Grow TV, we're going to finally see if Carl could get out of that hot air balloon. All right? Okay. I'll see you then. Bye. Thank you for watching and tune in next week for a new episode of Grow TV.
guys. Hey guys. In this series, in this we've series, been we've about been Elijah learning about Elijah and Elisha. And Elisha. We've learned about we've how learned they changed the world, with, the their world with their influence, their voice, their, their dreams, dreams, their dreams, and their passion. And their passion. They used the gifts they God used the gave gifts them to change, change the people's change hearts, the people's towards, hearts God. towards God. For example, for example, my friend in school, my friend used, in school her used her words to tell, words me, to tell me how much God loved me and wanted me to know him. Wanted me to know him. And because of that, because of that, I grew to know Jesus. To know so Jesus so much, much that he now uses that my he gifts now uses to help my others, gifts to help others, others learn about him. So you see, so you see, when you use your when gifts, you use your talents, gifts to help and others, talents to help others, God is using God you is using because you. He because loves people, people loves and people wants to and work wants through, to work us, through us, us to show everyone, to show everyone his, love. his love. So let so me ask you. A let me ask you a question. Do you know Jesus you as know your Savior? Jesus as your Savior? Jesus loves you and loves you and you to invite you to invite him to be the Lord of your life. He wants to be your he wants helper, to be your helper, your comforter, your comforter, and to guide you and, and to help guide you, you and right help you make right choices. He wants to give you he wants strength, to give you strength, and protect you, and protect and you, and help you, and, and help you everything, with everything in your life. So if you're ready to, so say, yes ready to, to Jesus, say yes to Jesus, in a few seconds, in a few seconds, you can, you can repeat, repeat after me. prayer after me. If you've already if you've already prayed to accept Jesus, Lord Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you don't need to do it. You don't need to do it again. You are already you are already saved. But if but you've never prayed that never prayer, prayed that prayer, bow your head, bow your head, and repeat after and me. repeat after me. But guys, really the guys, from your heart, heart, from your heart, with your whole heart, with your whole heart. Dear Jesus, dear Jesus, I know that I know that I'm a sinner, and I have and made I have made wrong choices, wrong choices, and done some and wrong done things. some wrong things. Please forgive Please me for, forgive all, my for all my sins. Jesus, Jesus I believe that I you, believe died, on you died on the cross for my sins. For my sins. That God raised, that God you, from raised you from the dead and that you are alive, you are today. alive today. So I put so my I trust my you. trust in you as my Lord, as my Lord Savior. and Savior. In Jesus' name, In Jesus' I pray. name I pray. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. If you prayed that if you prayed prayed that prayer with me, you have made the best, best important decision, important decision, of, your life. decision of your life. You are you now a member, are now of, God's a member of God's family. And we're so proud and we're so, of you. So excited, and so for you. excited for you. Now there are two things, now, there are two things that you need to do. One, one, tell your parent, tell your parent trusted another adult, trusted you adult pray, you start pray a relationship, start a relationship with, Jesus. with Jesus. Two, two, we want to celebrate. We want to celebrate and send you a, and send you a, a special a, gift, a special gift. So let us so know that you let us know that you by prayed. texting the word, by texting the word, K I D K I D two four zero two four two six nine two six two one two one zero zero. And welcome and welcome to God's family. All right, we're back. Yes, I know. Wow, that was such a great and amazing story. Mm -hmm. Wow, so in today's Bible story, we learned about a time when there was a famine. Mm -hmm. And we also learned that a famine was when there's not a lot of food out there to eat. Mm -hmm. I don't know what I would do in that time because I am always hungry. And so there was this time when there was a famine, there's not a lot of food to eat. And one of, one of uh, Elisha's men was cooking. He was cooking food. And he didn't cook that food too well because people, people started complaining about it. In fact, in the Bible, it says the people were screaming that there's death in the food. And man, I don't want to eat food like that. That sounds a little bit scary, but Elisha, our prophet, prayed to God about it. And then what ended up happening was he, he poured flour into the, into the stew and it actually healed it and fixed it. So they didn't... Uh, where they were they were not hurt from it, and then there, here's another miracle that happened. A baker, I think it was a baker, <laughs> came someone in. Someone who makes bread. Someone who makes bread came in with only 20 loaves of bread, and there were at least 100 men. And so the 100 men were, I don't know, 20 loaves doesn't seem like enough food for the men. But what ended up happening was another miracle. God provided enough food for all of them to eat. Wow. What do you think about that story? Insane. Insane. Okay, so when I think about that, I know that Elisha definitely asked God for help in that situation. And from that story, we, what, we, we, we can take that and think we can ask God for anything that we need to, right? 
That sounds like our big idea. Yeah, absolutely. We can ask God for anything. Now, it makes me wonder, Andrea, is there anything you can ask God for on behalf of other people? Okay, not for me. For others, yeah, I think that we can always pray to God for when we have a friend who's in need or maybe there's somebody in our family who's sick, we can always pray on their behalf, meaning we can pray for them and ask God to heal them or ask God to provide them with the food they might need or maybe the money they might need or maybe just that A plus on that exam. Yeah. Since we can God, oh, I was just gonna twist my words. Nope. We can God everything. We can God everything, but we can ask God for everything. Absolutely, can I share a story? Yeah. Okay. So I have a friend who was kind of going through a tough time, and I was just praying for him. I wanted him to know God just like I know God. Mm. And one day he just told me he started, he, he broke up in tears and said, you know what, I started praying in the mornings, not just for me, but for you too. And for me to hear that, that was an amazing blessing. And the thing was, I didn't tell him I was praying for him, and I was. So that's definitely something we can do for others. Yeah. Okay. Now, we have a fun game, Andrea. Do you want to share it? Yes. Okay, guys. So, game time. We have some Sharpies, as you can see, because we just always have a plethora of Sharpies, but we just need one today. Mm -hmm. So, pick your color. All right. I will go with blue. I am going to go with what I hope is tan, but it's probably pink. And then, we need one die. Dice. Dice. Die. Die? What's the plural? Dice. So one of these each, so just pick the color that you want. <laughs> I'm wrong about that. I don't know which one it is. It's so one of those two. We're going to play it safe. So we just need one. I'll go with the matching colors. And then a piece of paper each. So what we're going to do is draw a mouse. But we have to abide by the rules. So you're going to have to roll your cube. And whatever it rolls onto, that's what you have to draw. So a one would be a tail, two ears, three eyes, four whiskers, five nose, six body. The catch is you have to draw a six to even begin drawing. All right. So until you get a six, you can't start drawing. Once you do the six and you get the body, then you can keep going. Who and it's a race. Who do you going to make the cooler mouse? I dropped my dice. I think I'm already winning. No, I'm kidding. OK. OK, you ready? Yes. And go. I switched to green. Whoa! Oh, I got a six! Andre, I'm getting a little too pumped up for this. It's okay. All right, I drew a four, which means whiskers. Oh, wait, I need a head for that. But that's fine. You can still do it. Okay. Here we go. Six, so I'll draw another body. No, it's just the one body. <laughs> A four, so more whiskers. I might make two mice. <laughs> it's just, it's just the one you just keep I rolling until you I got more whiskers. Okay, well guys, he's gonna have a deformed something. All right, one is a tail. All right. Which mouse did you pick? <laughs> <laughs> the first one is my favorite. Eyes. Yep. And a two for ears. Do mice have ears? They've got to have ears. A two for another ear, for my second mouse. All right. Four for more whiskers. Four for more whiskers. All right. I don't need any more whiskers. Five for a nose. Oh, I just realized. A head is a part of the body, and I've been waiting to roll a head, and there's no head. I think I'm done. I might win this one. Eyes for my second mouse. Four for more whiskers. How many whiskers can a mouse have? One for another tail. Andrea, I think I'm going to win. Oh, wait a minute. I think I won already. Right, guys, so once you play the game, you should have a mouse on your piece of paper. Um, Ta-da! A for effort. Uh, oh, yours is pretty good. Wow. <laughs> All right, you guys can do this too. All right. Thank you for joining us, guys. And until next time, where we're going to keep talking about Elijah and Elijah for the last time.
yeah, continue, uh, come see us uh, finish up our series of Up in the Air. See you soon. <laughs> Bye, guys. <laughs>